Ever wondered how the financials of the world's leading fast food chains McDonald's and Burger King stack up against each other? Let's start with a glance at their total revenues for the third quarter of 2023. McDonald's raked in a whopping $19 billion, while Burger King brought in a respectable $5.2 billion. However, when we look at the five-year period from 2018 to 2023, we see that Burger King's compound annual growth rate, or KGR, slightly outpaced McDonald's at 5% compared to 4% respectively. While these revenue figures are impressive, the structure of these revenues tells a more nuanced story. For McDonald's, a majority of their revenue, 61%, comes from franchise revenues, while the remaining 38% is from company-operated sales. Burger King, on the other hand, has a more diversified revenue structure. 57% of their revenue comes from Tim Hortons, 30% from Burger King itself, 10% from Popeyes, and 3% from Firehouse Subs. Geographically, McDonald's sees 41% of its revenue from the United States, 48% from international operated markets, and 10% from international developmental licensed markets. Burger King's revenue is slightly more concentrated, with 52% coming from Canada, 36% from the United States, and 13% from other regions. These figures provide a snapshot of the company's performance and their growth over the past five years. But what about profitability? Profitability is a key aspect to consider when evaluating a company's financial health. Let's dive in by looking at the gross profit margin and net profit margin of both McDonald's and Burger King for the third quarter of 2023. McDonald's gross profit margin stands at a robust 58% a noteworthy increase compared to its five-year average of 54%. On the other hand, Burger King's gross profit margin is at 40%, slightly underperforming its five-year average of 46%. When we turn our attention to the net profit margin, McDonald's presents a strong figure of 34%, exceeding its five-year average of 29%. Burger King, however, maintains a steady net profit margin of 13%, consistent with its five-year average. However, profitability isn't just about margins. Net profit, the bottom line, is equally crucial. McDonald's net profit for the same period is $6 billion showing a compound annual growth rate, or KGR, of 7% over the past five years. Burger King, while starting from a smaller base, has shown faster growth with a net profit of $1 billion and a CAGR of 12% over the same period. These figures paint a picture of two companies with different profit trajectories. McDonald's, with its higher profit margins and substantial net profit, is a powerhouse in the fast food industry. Meanwhile, Burger King, despite lower profit margins, is showing promising growth in its net profit. These figures tell us about the company's ability to generate profit. But what about their financial stability? Financial stability plays a crucial role in assessing a company's health. When we consider the state of affairs at the end of the third quarter of 2023, we find that McDonald's total assets stood at $52 billion, while Burger King held $23 billion in assets. A significant difference indeed, but there's more to the story. Turning our attention to net assets, we see an interesting twist. Both McDonald's and Burger King reported net assets of $5 billion. How can that be given the disparity in total assets? Let's delve a bit deeper. The equity to total assets ratio provides a measure of a company's financial leverage. In this case, McDonald's ratio was 9%, indicating a higher use of debt in its capital structure, while Burger King's ratio was twice as high, at 20%, showing a more conservative approach to debt. A company's liquidity is another vital factor in evaluating its financial stability. The current ratio, which measures a company's ability to cover its short-term liabilities with its short-term assets, was 1.71 for McDonald's and 1.15 for Burger King, both above one suggesting good short-term financial health. Another measure, the quick ratio, excludes inventories from current assets, offering a stricter view of a company's short-term liquidity. McDonald's quick ratio was 1.7 and Burger King's was 1.07. Again, both companies show numbers above one, reinforcing their strong liquidity positions. So what does all this mean? Well, while McDonald's and Burger King have different strategies concerning capital structure and leverage, both appear to be in strong positions regarding liquidity and ability to cover short-term obligations. These figures tell us about the company's financial stability but what about their operational efficiency? Operational efficiency is a clear indicator of how well a company is managing its resources to generate profits. 
Diving into operational efficiency, we look at factors like inventory days and accounts receivable days. McDonald's is ticking along with a swift turnover of inventory, clocking in at just two days. Burger King, on the other hand, is a bit slower off the mark with 13 inventory days. It's a similar story with accounts receivable days. McDonald's collects its receivables in about 31 days, while Burger King takes a touch longer at 34 days. When it comes to cash flow, an essential element in evaluating a company's liquidity, solvency, and financial flexibility, both fast food giants have solid figures. McDonald's operating cash flow sits at a whopping $7 billion, while Burger King's is at a respectable $1 billion. Now let's talk about free cash flow. This is the cash a company generates after accounting for capital expenditures like buildings or equipment. It's the cash available for expansion, dividends, debt repayment, or other business activities. McDonald's free cash flow is an impressive $6 billion, with Burger King trailing at $1 billion. Looking at the operating cash flow to net income ratio gives us an idea of a company's ability to turn profits into cash. McDonald's ratio is 1.1, indicating a strong ability to convert profit into cash. Burger King, not to be outdone, has a slightly higher ratio of 1.3, showing that it too is efficient at converting profit into cash. These figures provide an insight into the company's operational efficiency, but what about their return on equity? Return on equity or ROE is a measure of financial performance that can provide insights into a company's profitability. It's a key indicator of how efficiently a company uses its equity to generate profits. Let's delve into a DuPont analysis of McDonald's and Burger King's ROE for the third quarter of 2023. This analysis breaks down ROE into three components, net profit margin, asset turnover, and equity multiplier, giving us a more detailed view of the company's financial performance. McDonald's ROE stood at a staggering 177%. This was driven by a robust net profit margin of 34%, indicating that McDonald's is highly profitable. Its asset turnover was 0.5, meaning that for every dollar in assets, McDonald's generated half a dollar in sales. The equity multiplier, or asset-to-equity ratio, was 10.73, implying that McDonald's has been effectively using leverage to boost its ROE. On the other hand, Burger King's ROE was 19%, which is modest compared to McDonald's. Its net profit margin was 13%, showing that Burger King is less profitable per dollar of revenue. The asset turnover was 0.3, meaning it generated 30 cents in sales for every dollar in assets. The asset to equity ratio was 4.95, indicating that Burger King uses less leverage than McDonald's. In summary, McDonald's has a higher ROE, driven by its superior profitability and effective use of leverage. However, Burger King shows a more conservative approach with less reliance on leverage. These figures give us a comprehensive view of the company's financial performance and their ability to generate returns on equity. Understanding these metrics is crucial in evaluating potential investments and in determining which company has a more sustainable business model over the long term.